Section 610, this one is about integration using long division to help simplify our integral before we integrate. And the other one is completing the square, which sets it up into a nice pattern that we can recognize and integrate. So let's just get started. Long division. So if my numerator has a higher degree or an equal degree to the denominator, so here I'm looking at a cube over a square, I know I can use long division. And you may just want to, whose numerator's degree is either greater than or equal to the denominator's degree, we want to use long division. So let's go, maybe I'm do my long division over here. And I've got x squared plus 4 into 3x cubed plus 2x plus 5. So I asked myself, how many times will x squared go into 3x cubed? And the answer to that question is it will go in there 3x times. I want, it, want the product of these two to match exactly that dividend. All right, so that's going to be perfect. I'm going to take 3x times x squared. That gives me 3x cubed. I'll take 3x times 4. That'll give me 12x. That'll line up perfectly underneath the x column. I'm subtracting both of these terms, so I will get a 0. 2 minus 12 gives me negative 10x. Now I come back and I ask, will x squared go into 10x? The answer is no. Um, so let's we are done, but let's bring the 5 down. Don't miss that. So this will become a remainder of um, plus negative 10x plus 5 over my divisor x squared plus 4. This now, can we can come over here and update our integral. We'll have the integral of 3x, that'll be easy, plus 10, negative 10x plus 5 over x squared plus 4. And you're like, wait a minute, that doesn't look so easy. No, it doesn't, does it? What if I did this? 3x minus, I'm going to go plus, negative 10x over x squared plus 4. Add with 5 over that common denominator, x squared plus 4. Does that mathematically look legal? And the answer is yes. We can do that. We can take that numerator and split it up by addition there with the same denominator. Now it's like I've got three individual integral problems. The first being quite easy. 3 halves x squared. The next one, well, 10x over an x squared, that's like a derivative of the original. So I think for this one, we can use u sub. And for this last one, this looks like an arc tan style to me. So it's a recognition of the integrals. For the u sub, we would let u equal x squared plus 4. du would equal 2x dx. And now I'm trying to make negative 10. If you wanted to, you could say I'm multiplying by negative 5 du equals negative 10x dx. And then just in a, um, substitute that in. Negative 5u replaces negative 10x dx. That's fine. Or if you prefer... You could divide by 2 and say 1 half du equals x dx, which is what we've been used to um, that we did during uh, AB. So now I'm going to have, I've got the negative 10 I could pull out front. I've got the 1 half du replacing 10x dx. And on the bottom, this will be my du. On the bottom, that is our u. Oh, that's going to integrate into a natural log, isn't it? And notice it's going to be negative 5, like we were talking about there. Um, the next and last integral there is a 1 over x squared plus 4 dx. 
That is an arc tan style. And I know that my U would be X, my A would be two, DU is equivalent to DX, so that'll be a nice, easy arc tan style. All right, let's finish this up. Three halves X squared minus five natural log absolute value of U, if you want, go ahead and replace U right now, plus five, one over A, that's a one over two, arc tan of U over A. U was X, A was two, and then we need to go our plus C. Um, a little bit, final cleanup. Three halves X squared minus five. Let's replace U with X squared plus four. There's natural log of X squared plus four plus five halves arc tan X over two plus C. Yeah, three different styles of integration in that one little problem. All right, the next one, Ooh, this looks like a doozy. But I do notice that the numerator is still larger than the denominator. Just looking to see what the catch is on this one. All right, so let's use long division. Let me go back here. I want to take that ink off. That seems to make this run a little smoother. So let's do long division. X squared plus two, or plus five is our divisor. The dividend was X cubed plus three X squared plus eight X plus 19. X squared goes into X cubed X times. Multiply it out, we get X cubed and a five X. Find the appropriate column to put that in. That is a positive. So I really have zero for X squareds, right? We're going to, going to subtract all that. That will get me a 0, a 3x squared, 8 minus 5 uh, is 3x, and then I can bring down the 19. Now, will x squared go into 3x squared? Of course it will, three times. Go into multiplication. That's going to give me a 3x squared plus 15 in the appropriate column, in the number column. All right, subtracting. That gives me a 0. 3x minus 0 gives me 3x. 19 minus 15 is positive 4. There's our remainder. So I get a plus 3x plus 4 over x squared plus 5. Now we can come back over here, simplify out this integral, write it differently. It's an x squared plus, no it's not, it's reading the divisor. Um, it is an x plus three plus three x plus four over x squared plus five. But you know what? I think it's gonna be exactly the same as last time Let's split this up into an x squared plus five and then do a plus four over that common denominator, x squared plus five. That's fair, means the same. All right, now just start your integration process. Um, the first two are gonna be easy. I get um, x squared over two or one half x squared plus three x. This next one, this is going to be a U sub, isn't it? And this last one looks like an arc tan style to me. So for U sub, where do we want to do our U sub? Right here. U sub. I'm going to let U equal the bottom stuff because it has the higher degree. When I take a derivative, I'm going to get 2x dx. I'm trying to match to a 3x, so that's not quite going to happen. I'm going to call this a 1 half. du equals the x dx. All right, so this becomes, let's just keep it in green. I can bring the 3 out front, 
the X gets replaced with one half du. Uh, one half, where am I gonna fit it? Right here, one half du replaces the X dx. On the bottom, X squared plus five is my U plus four out front integral, um, <laughs> running out of space, my uh, arctan stuff. Will you be able to follow this work? My arctan. The u squared is x squared, so u is x. That means du is dx. Okay, nice and clean. And then my a is root 5. That should, have, that should be good enough now. I can play off of that. 1 half x squared plus 3x plus 3 halves. The integral of 1 over u is natural log, absolute value of u. To save a space, let's just replace u right away. x squared plus 5. Plus, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't write the rest of this. Integral of... The 4 came out front, and we would have 1 over x squared plus 5 dx, unless you wanted to put the a's and the u's in place, which would be fine too. Um, this is going to be a 4. I recognize the pattern as arctan. That's a 1 over a, 1 over root 5, arctan, arctan of u over of u over a. So x over square root 5 plus c. Uh, the last and final thing, the only thing I can see is changing and multiplying this through so we get a 4 over root 5 as our answer. <sighs> A lot of work. Okay, completing the square. I have talked to you about completing the square. We did one example in class. This one will be a nice example. So we know with completing the square, what we're trying to achieve is a perfect square trinomial out of this. I get x squared minus 4x plus, I got to come in with some box number there. And then I'm going to have, I shove that 7 over to the side, and now I'm going to subtract that same number from the box. So there'll be a subtraction. Um, what goes in the box? Middle term, 4 divided by 2 is 2. Square it, I get 4. So I'm going to subtract 4. This should lead us into a nice integral of dx over, first thing's a perfect square, x minus 2 quantity squared plus 3. Arctan style, right? This is arctan. So our u is equal to x minus 2. Just check the derivative, whether you do it in your head or write it down. I can see that du is equivalent to dx. That'll be an easy sub then. And then our a squared is the 3. That means a is square root 3. We should have all the components we need now to write this integral. We will have, uh, do I have anything up front? No. Uh, 1 over a, 1 over square root 3, um, arc tan of u over a, x minus 2 over a, which is root 3. Oh, that was really crappy. plus C, because we are finding the antiderivative. That's it. Complete the square. The next one, whoo, lead coefficient is a negative. That's because I'm looking at the highest degree and see the negative. We can still complete the square, although I'll probably do a little bit of arranging. You know what, let me erase this last thing, because that's what slow it's down, slows us down there. So much ink it's trying to save. All right, um, well, where do we want to go? 
let's rearrange bringing that negative x squared forward and 3x there. I still don't really love this, so I'm going to, I hate lead negatives, so I'm going to get rid of the lead negative by factoring it out. Negative. Now I've got x squared minus 3x plus, let's go into complete the square pattern, plus a box, close the parenthesis, uh, 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 um, minus a box. We just got a balance, don't we? But is it a minus? Well, since this is negative box, I got to correct this and add the number. That'll be offsetting then. What goes in the box? Well, three divided by two, and then I got to square that. That's where I'm coming up with nine fourths then. Nine fourths, nine fourths. That creates an integral that looks like one over a square root negative x minus three halves, right? I can always look right there. Quantity squared plus nine fourths. All of this being underneath in the divisor within the square root dx. Do you recognize this? Not quite. This would have to be our u squared, wouldn't it? So we got a minus u squared and a plus a squared. What if we turn this around? Would you recognize it then? Let's lead with the a squared. So 9 fourths minus the u squared, x minus 3 halves, quantity squared, dx. Let's just say dx there. Yeah, this now is square root a squared minus u squared. Arc sine. Okay, arc sine it is. Um, just wondering if I need to. I know that u is equal to x minus 3 halves. Okay, then du and dx are easily exchangeable. And then a squared is 9 fourths, so a is 3 halves. Got the numbers I need. This will integrate. Um, arc sine does not have the 1 over a in front, so we just go into arc sine of u over a, u being x minus 3 halves over our a, which is 3 halves. That looks not so pretty. Um, I want to clear this here and then add c. Okay, I can't leave it looking that terrible. So arc sine multiply by two thirds, and that would go through x minus three halves. Still can't leave it. It's just begging to be simplified. Arc sine of two times two, uh, how do I want to do it? Two thirds. 2 thirds x minus 1. Okay, I'm satisfied with that. I can leave it there. Ah, feels good. Integration by adding 0 to the numerator. Okay, this one's kind of a clever one. This final integration technique might sound kind of strange. How does adding 0 to the numerator help us find an antiderivative? Well, it can be viewed kind of as a little trick. This method provides an easy way to transform an integrand to something more manageable and therefore integrable. All right, so if I wanted u sub and I let the denominator be my u, then its derivative would have to look like e to the x, wouldn't it? So... I kind of need an e to the x. And that's where I'm going to get some insight to adding an e to the x. But I want to kind of add it as a zero net effect. So I'm going to take my integral and I'm going to take 1 and add to it an e to the x. But to offset it, I'm going to subtract an e to the x. You're know, like, holy cow, why would you do that? Wait to see. It's like math magic. 
Um, e to the x plus 1 is our denominator, dx. Now let's split this. Let's talk about the integral of 1 plus e to the x over e to the x plus 1, dx. Subtract the integral of e to the x over e to the x plus 1, dx. Okay, what do you see about this first integral? Same over same. They're in different order, but it doesn't matter because um, addition is commutable. We can change the order. So that becomes really the integral of 1 dx minus the integral of e x over e x plus 1 dx. Integral of 1 is easy peasy, x. This one, we would use a u sub. That u sub would say let u equal the denominator e x plus 1. And looky here, du equals e x dx. Perfect. This becomes a minus integral du for the e x dx over a u, which we recognize as natural log, whoops, minus, natural log integration. Natural log of absolute value u, which is e to the x plus 1 plus c. It's really cool the way that works. Just by adding and subtracting the same thing, we can get this nice grouping to work out super smooth. All right, is there more? Why, of course there is. There's that one left. Um, I've kind of had enough. You've probably had enough. On this one, what, what the trick is, is we want to go um, plus, one mi plus one minus one on this, and it will work out kind of nice. Um, I'm going to let you try that one on your own if you want. Otherwise, let's call it a day.